Hey everyone, Caroline here with Road and Country. Um, I wanted to make a video today. I had set um, a live trap on my deck. I suspect that I had um, a rat on the deck. And uh, I've told many people this in the past um, regarding mites and lice and how domesticated animals in the house, rodents specifically, uh, end up with mites and lice. And uh, a lot of people think that it comes from the bedding, um, and though there's always a possibility, it's, it's really highly unlikely just because uh, mites and lice need a host to live on, and they're going to be seeking that, and so bedding is not something they're going to be after. Uh, now, the only time that you may run into a situation where um, you would have it in bedding is, is perhaps in a small mom-and-pop shop, uh, that carry a lot of rodents uh, or other type of animals in close, close proximity to uh, the bedding that they're selling. And then potentially then there could be uh, some mites, um, you know, or possibly some lice uh, on the bag or within the bag. Um, so the question was, well, how, how did they get in? Uh, or how did they get there in the first place? So uh, rodent mites um, and, and even bird mites um, can affect rodents. And so if you look around your house and you see a bird's nest, um, then that's going to be a potential uh, cause there. Uh, once that bird leaves, uh, the mites that's in that nest are gonna look for a new source. And so mites can move rather quickly. Uh, they can travel very long distances and they can live off a of host for up to six weeks. Uh, so it doesn't take long for them to make their way in the house to find a host. Um, so if you have bird's nest around the house and you see it being vacated, uh, then you, you can either take the nest down or what I do is I just spray the nest down with my reef and concentrate. So that way if the bird does come back next season or later on in the year to reuse the nest, then it'll be there for them. Um, and uh, won't affect their nesting. Uh, so the other source would be my, uh, rats and uh, mice. And so most times you don't even know you have them um, and uh, you know they go unsuspected. Uh, they could either live around the house, in the house, in the ceilings, in the walls, or even in the root cellar uh, underneath the house. And, you know, because they're very shy animals, they're typically not going to make themselves uh, seen. And so you may never know you have them. And the problem is, is generally they are there. Uh, if you have rats and mice, uh, you know, they're, even though they're domesticated, they're still going to attract other rats and mice. And so, um, you know, inherently you're going to end up having some around the house. And so what happens is they're going to set maybe a nest or they're going to have their little group. And let's say you do like I do, and I, I bait, my, I bait the, the whole property uh, for wild rats. And so when they die, they vacate the nest, obviously. And now you have these mites that are going to be looking for a new source. And typically, they're attracted um, by CO2, um, and uh, so that's that's kind of generally what's going to bring them in the house because of the CO2 levels are going to be a little higher than outside. Um, so anyway, I, I know that I, there's going to be rats and mice, and so I typically will set live traps um, around the property, uh, you know, just to see what, uh, what I'm catching first off, you know, what, what type I'm catching, uh, and also what age group I'm catching. Uh, that way that lets me know, uh, you know, what I've got going on, because uh, I have an issue with the adults, the Norwegian rats, uh, that if I have guinea pigs having babies in my barn, um, if there's a problem with these rats, then they're going to steal these babies and eat them. Uh, so, it's, uh, sorry, I'm right by the road, so it's a little loud. Uh, so it's really important for me to keep up with what's going on on the property. So anyway, I had a, a, a trap set and I did catch a wild rat. Um, it is a, it's not a super young one, but it is a juvenile. Um, from what I can see, I believe it's female. Um, and so I'm gonna switch the camera around just to show you, uh, first off, you know, what they look like because, you know, some people think, oh, you know, they, they look very similar to domesticated rats. Um, 
and maybe in some sense color wise they might but they they have quite a bit of different characteristics to them i mean it's it's very obvious to know that this is not a domesticated rat it is a wild rat so i'm going to switch the camera over here um if it'll let me okay i'm back it would not switch over so i had to end up reshooting the video here so um so anyway so here is the rat and i'm gonna just try to get as close up as i can so you can see how different they look um the, the their eyes are set very close together their ears um are set quite a bit different also um and this particular rat is obviously um yes i did add water i'm not cruel i i wanted to be able to make sure that it stayed hydrated out in this heat while i was able to keep it long enough to be able to shoot this video for you guys um so as you can see uh there is they do look you know somewhat different as far as just the facial characteristics um i mean the other telltale is just obviously their wildest can be um, this particular one um because of its age i think is is actually pretty daring um if i motion it it will try to actually come over see it'll follow me so now this is not a pet guys okay um, I mean just because it looks like it might show some interest this is definitely not a pet um, they harbor a lot of diseases um, and uh, it's not something that you want in your house for sure but anyway so what I did is um, as you can see I put some powder uh, this is a mixture of DE um, sulfa and um uh pyrethrin powder and i just kind of i i had to put this around it because i already could see mites crawling all over the place and i was unfortunately um i don't see any more because i sprayed it or, or put the powder down um i was hoping i could show you what one looks like uh, because this rat obviously has enough mites that it's harboring the the larger adults and so you can actually see them um, I'm thinking this, I don't know if you can see that or not, I'm thinking that this little black spot right there might have been one. Um, but anyway, so they were moving quite fast. I mean, they were all over this table. Um, and so, you know, when you see them move, you can understand how quickly they can get in your house. Um, so even though this guy is alive and so, um, you know, just they're all over the table so it's not it doesn't necessarily have to be a dead animal that's vacated the place for the mites to want to make their way into your home um but this is this is really the most uh uh probable for reason of having mites or lice in your home on your uh, on your rodents um so anyway i hope that you find this video helpful if you do please you know make a comment um and uh, this guy here, um, I haven't quite decided what I'm going to do with him yet, um, as I am not one to uh, intentionally kill animals uh, if I don't have to. Uh, so I may end up having to drive uh, a good 10 miles away from this house in a field somewhere to release it, uh, because they, they will find their way back. I mean, if you, if you don't go far enough, they will find their way back. Um, but this is evidence that um, that there's rats here still. So if you have any questions, don't uh, hesitate to message me. Uh, my Facebook page is Rodent Country. Um, and um, I'll uh, probably leave it my, uh, my text number for you to text me if you'd like uh, in, the, uh, in the comment section um, if you have any questions regarding this. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. Appreciate it.